fine. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> yes, speak louder. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. It's a beautiful day today, isn't it, with the sunshine and a little nippy this morning? But, uh, amen. We're going to just accept it as a good day from the Lord and rejoice in it and be glad, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let me open in prayer this morning. Lord, we come to you this day, God, and we request that you come and be with us, God. Your presence would be with us, that we'll uh, speak your word, Lord, that the word that you'd have us to speak, God, that you'd take over our minds and give us your idea, and then, God, take over our lips that we'll speak your thoughts. And, and we ask that the, the people can receive the word that you'd give them. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to do something just a little bit different this morning. Anybody thirsty? You thirsty? Okay, well, I'm glad somebody was. Anybody else? We got a bottle of water for anybody that's thirsty. Nobody else thirsty? Amen. Well, I'm glad you are, Michelle. I'm going somewhere with this. Hallelujah. You know, Church, sometimes it seems like everybody takes care of the preacher, you know, with the water. What about the congregation? Amen? They're just as important as the preacher. And so, uh, anyways, uh, I want to, uh, actually, I, I did that for a reason this morning, because I want it to be an object lesson that, uh, you know, we, as a, uh, I, as a pastor, I believe that I'm a servant of God and I want to serve people and uh, you know this is a little thing amen probably unless you're real thirsty it's probably a little thing but can be a big thing but you know that the Bible has a word about if we give someone a cup of cold water that we would re receive a reward mm -hmm. amen I don't know what kind of reward it doesn't say what kind of a reward but it does say that we would receive a reward. And so uh, I'm glad this morning that uh, Michelle was thirsty because I want a reward. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I just want a reward from the Lord for uh, you know doing what He would have us to do. And I want to go to uh, Matthew, and actually I have this down in the Scriptures used, but this is uh, should, should have been up on the top line there. I made a mistake there. But Matthew uh, chapter 10, and then I want to start uh, verse 40 and go through 42. Chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 40, and then go through 42. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of the disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So, you know, the Bible's telling us that if we would just give a cup of uh, cold water to someone, that we will have a reward. And I was thinking uh, this morning, I want to... Uh, bring to you a little bit more on being a servant. And, and I believe that uh, myself, I believe that God has been speaking to me about this church, that if we are going to be a successful church, we must get this message about being a servant. In fact, I think that, that uh, uh, if we don't get this message of being a servant, I believe that we will miss the Lord. I think that's how important this this is. And in fact, I don't know how a church can exist without being a servant. In, in a true reality, I think some of the churches today, you know, like I said, we're all ready to take care of the pastor and give him water, but what about the body of Christ? In other words, I don't think that the body of Christ is here to serve the church. I think the church is here to serve the body of Christ. Amen? And as we, as we serve the body of Christ as a church, how many knows our church will 
be blessed. We'll have a reward. We will, uh, I believe God will uh, bring people. God will do things for the church. And I, I honestly think as a whole, the church has forgotten their mission. They have forgotten that it's for the people that we are to serve. And uh, let me, uh, I, I want to read also another scripture, and I think it will uh, possibly uh, help to lay some groundwork for uh, where I'm wanting to go this morning. Hallelujah. And I want to go to uh, St. John in chapter 3 and verses 30 through 36. And this is, uh, I believe it's uh, John the Baptist talking. And he, sa he says in chapter, or in verse 30, He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is in the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he shall, what he has seen and heard, that he testify, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received the testimony has set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believe on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. I want to specifically talk to you about verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. And uh, so many times, church, we all heard the song, want to talk about me? Amen. Remember the song that says, I want to talk about me. I'm tired of talking about you. I want to talk about me. Amen. But that, that's not actually what, uh, and I know that sometimes, church, that we do need to uh, have communication. But I'm, I'm here to say that as a rule, we as people are more concerned about ourselves than we are about other people. And this is, I believe, what God is trying to, trying to speak to us. We're going to have to decrease. We're going to have to get out of this mode where we're so concerned about ourselves. And we're going to have to come to the, to the mode where we're concerned about taking the gospel out to people. Now, I believe when Jesus was on this earth, I believe that he modeled this. If you look at Jesus, he was always helping somebody. He was always doing something for somebody else. And, uh, and he tells us, we had that the last time we preached on being a servant, that Jesus said that he was a servant to the people. And, and that's what he did. He was a servant. And so I want, you know, uh, I want to drive this home somehow. We have got to get this. We've got to get it in our hearts. We've got to get it in our church. And we've got to have it working. I believe that it is it's that important to this church. I believe that, you know, I've been praying and asking the Lord, what do we need to do? How do we need to, you know, what do we got to do to turn the church around? And I believe this is what he's given me. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm tempted to get ahead of the message here and go on into it, but uh, I want to, uh, let's go to St. John in chapter 13, and uh, St. John chapter 13, verses 7 through 20. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. And Simon Peter said unto the Lord, Not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet. But he is clean every whit, and you are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore he said, You are not all clean. 
So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garment, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know you what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. He's saying to the, to the people here, he's saying, I'm, or the disciples, he's saying, I'm, I've done this for an example. That you should do as I have done. I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord, neither is he Neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. I speak not of all of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture may be that the scripture may be fulfilled, that he that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heels against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass you believe that I am he. Verily, verily I say unto you, he that Receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me, and he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Now Jesus, this is uh, what they call the Last Supper here, and Jesus is sitting with his disciples, and he takes his, he takes time to wash the disciples' feet, and uh, which is, he's doing that, as we read into the scripture here, that he's doing that for an example to the to the disciples that they would get this. In other words, he's saying to the disciples, now this is like very close to Jesus' death on the cross. So this is one of the very last things that he is saying to them. And he is saying to them, hey, you disciples, this is important. This is so important that one of the very last things that I'm going to say to you before I leave this earth is... For you to be a servant. In other words, he's saying, I want you to learn this. I want you to know that you have to be a servant. And, and he's teaching that to him. And he's, he's not only teaching it to him, he's modeling it for that. And he, he's saying, you get this now. Get this down in your spirit. In other words, don't forget this. And so I think it's that important. And I also want to go to... Uh, I want to go to St. John, chapter 6, and verses 1 through 14. St. John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. And this is where Jesus is feeding the 5,000. And after these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is in the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were deceived. And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, and, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company coming unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he, he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, and that every one of, of, of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in numbers about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples and the disciples of them that were set down, likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet that should come into the world. 
Now I want you to know, church, that God did a miracle here, a great miracle. He fed 5,000 people. I was thinking as I was reading that, you know, if uh, the disciples said 200 penny worth wouldn't even buy enough food for these people. And I was thinking if, if today somebody said to me, hey, we've got to feed 5,000 people, how would you, that would be quite, a, quite an expense, wouldn't it? Feed 5,000 people, I mean, that's no little thing. But Jesus is not only feeding these people, but he is also teaching the disciples. If we look down there, Jesus took the bread, he broke the bread, and then what did he do? He gave it to the disciples and told them to distribute it. In other words, he is teaching the disciples here. He's saying, hey, you need to be a servant. You need to learn this. I want you to serve these people. I want you to, to see that these people... Now, let's think of this on a different way. This is the natural food that Jesus is telling the disciples to, to give to the people. He's telling them to give it. But he also tells them to give the spiritual food. Amen? How many knows that he wants us to, we as servants of God should be someone that will give spiritual food to somebody that's hungry. Amen. Somebody that, that needs to be fed some spiritual food. We need to be ready to share. Little, I, I say this this morning, little is much with the Lord. Remember, he started out with just a few barley loaves and just a little couple fish. But he blessed that. And that makes me think of what Hugh Baker said. He said, we wanted a church. He said, none of us had nothing. He said, we brought the little bit that we had, and God blessed, and we had a church. Amen. Sometimes church is just using the little bit that you have. And get started. And how many know sometimes God can take the little bit that you have and make something great out of it? Okay. Now I want to uh, I want to go to Matthew in chapter nine. Thirty-seven to thirty-nine. Then saith he unto the disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. I want to bring something to your attention this day. He's saying the harvest is ready. And, and he's saying pray that the Lord of the harvest would send the laborers. Now I want you to understand something and that is this that when these in the time of these people when, when Jesus was on the earth and he was teaching this how many knows that it was the servant's job to bring in the harvest. Amen. The servants are the one that went out and gathered in the harvest. And I thought, you know, this is why it's so important to this church. We spoke earlier in the year about how that this church is going to be a, a harvest church. Okay, so who is going to bring in the harvest? Amen. The servants will bring in the harvest. And who is the, who is the servants? You and I. Amen. And so, this is why I'm trying to bring this down and drive it home, you might say, or nail it on hard. Got a big old spike here, and we're nailing this on you, trying to get this stuck on you, so there's no way you can rub it off, there's no way you can get rid of it, but that you would know that you are the servant, and I am your servant as I am the servant of the church, you are also servant. And it's not, it's not for the church to serve the pastor. It's for the pastor to serve the people and then for the people to serve the community. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, if we're going to be a good Holy Ghost-filled church, that we have to get this. 
we have to do this. This is something that, that has to be incorporated into this church, that we uh, forget not that we are the servants of the Lord. For some reason, my mind is, keeps going to, uh, you know, the song was talking about the little girl that she was actually, she had died. And it was uh, this week, you know, we've been, uh, there's somebody that we've been wanting to go pray for him. And, and uh, I, it's like three o'clock in the morning, one morning I was, I was up and, and I was praying, Lord, how do you want us to pray? for this person, you know, because they, they're pretty terminally, looks like they're terminally ill. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes, church, I believe that we can keep people suffering when we pray for them. It's just something I believe, you know, if they're, if they're, if they're in a place and we pray that the Lord will heal them, we can keep them from dying. Amen? I don't know if you believe that, but I believe that sometimes we can actually pray a prayer that uh, somebody that we could prolong somebody's death. I guess that's what I'm really saying by just praying a, a prayer. So I, you know, whenever I, I pray for somebody that that is uh, uh, in pretty bad shape, you know, I always kind of like to know how to pray because I don't want to prolong somebody's suffering. Amen. I mean, no. Sometimes it would be easier for somebody just to go on and it may be sometimes that we need to pray that they can go on and in peace but anyways I was praying you know Lord how do you want me to pray and he brought back to me this scripture about that he said I heal somebody when they was dead when they was dead he healed them and uh, I thought, wow, that's true. He did. You know, this, this girl was dead. And he went in there. And as the song says, he told all the unbelievers to leave. But then, oh, I don't know why, but I feel this in my spirit this morning. Then he healed somebody that was dead. Now that, that was speaking to me, I believe to pray the prayer of faith over this man that, that we've been wanting to visit because I believe that Jesus is saying I can heal him. Amen. I guess maybe I'm saying this all to say to church. Sometimes being a servant of God we need to hear from God. What do you want me to do in this situation? In other words, how do you want me to pray for this person? Anybody got any comment on that? You agree or disagree? Or, uh, I've, I've, I've just, it's just something that I've kind of, you know, different times when I went to see people and I knew that they were near death, it, it's like sometimes I say, I don't really know that I need to be praying a prayer to heal them at this time. Maybe it's time for them. See, the reason I say this is because the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. Now listen, if they have a date set for them to die, in other words, God's got an appointed time for them to die, and then we go in and we pray a prayer of faith, I honestly think sometimes we can prolong that, that death. And so, uh, let us be sensitive to what the Spirit is saying. As servants of God, we want to be sensitive to what God is saying so that we don't do things to hinder somebody from either leaving this world or being healed. And also, I mean, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to skip praying the prayer, and the prayer of faith when God's wanting to heal somebody either. Does this make any sense to you that it is, it, it's very important for us as servants of God to hear what he is saying to us, to know. And the only way to do that is to get with God and talk to him and ask him, you know, what do you want us to do? What do, you, how do you? How do you want me to do this? How do you want me to do that? And uh, 
so anyways. We see many times where Jesus was very concerned about the person that he was meeting with. And, and uh, we even see where in, this, in the scriptures that we read this morning, I don't think it actually said it in the scripture that I read this morning, but there are other scriptures of the same story, and he said he had compassion on them that he didn't want to send them away hungry because he was afraid, you know, they'd come a very far place, uh, uh, walked a long way, that's how they traveled back then, they either walked or they, I guess they rode a donkey. And so he was concerned about the people that they would, if they would leave without being fed, that they would be faint, in other words, they would be weak. And, and so he uh, wanted to feed them. How many know, church, that sometimes people are faint in the spirit? They're in a weakened state. They, maybe they've come through a, a hard battle, a battle that has knocked them down hard. And not that they're knocked out of the battle, but they've been, they've been fighting and they've been fighting a hard battle. I want you to know, church, that God, sometimes God wants us to encourage them people, to give them courage, to, to uh, uh, how do how do we speak a word to them, and what word is going to cause somebody that's been beat down in their spirit? What word is going to cause them to be lifted up? I don't know. It's different words for different people, and I think this is where being the servant of God comes in, that we hear what He's saying to us. That we hear the words to speak to somebody from God. Or at least that we get some kind of an inkling, maybe I should say it like that, in what direction to go. So let's, uh, I think I've, uh, I just want church to say to you, first of all, that I believe that God has called us to be a harvest church. And if he's called us to be a harvest church, then he's also called us to be the servants to bring in the harvest. Amen? Amen. And I want to leave that with you. And I, want, I would like for you to, uh, in the weeks that, that come, for you to be praying, God, how can we be the servant that you're calling us to be? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? And I believe. You see, church, the scripture says, Knock, and the door will be open. Seek, and you will find. And I believe if we seek the Lord, and we're knocking, God, what do you want me to do? I believe God will. Hallelujah. I, I not only believe it, I know. Because in the scripture, he said, If you ask for bread, would I give you a stone? Amen. If you ask for bread, he said, I'm going to give you bread, because that's what you ask for. So if you're asking God to help us to learn what kind of a servant do you want me to be? How do you want me to serve God? I believe that God will sometime, some way, put that in your spirit. Either, either at a spoken word, maybe somebody preaching a message, maybe out of a song, uh, maybe God will speak to you directly. I mean, those God still speaks to people directly. Yeah. Amen. So, in matter of fact, I would say that he probably would confirm it by at least two different ways. Amen. So you don't have to doubt. You know, sometimes you hear something and you start doubting. Well, you know, if you hear it twice, you pretty well know that God's, God's saying this to you. And, and, you know, the word, that was one of the things, as a, a young Christian, that was one of the things that uh, 
somebody taught me early on, and they said, don't disbelieve something if you just see it one time in the scripture. Make sure that it's in there twice. Because then you know for sure that that's what it's saying. You've read it twice. And uh, so uh, I, would, I, would, I guess I would give that to you also as a, as a something, uh, a gauge or whatever you want to say. As you uh, feel like the Lord might be leading you and guiding you, uh, I believe it's all right to ask the Lord to confirm it. You know, twice. Let me hear it twice. Amen. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, I think we'll stop there. I encourage you, I'm going to say this again, I encourage you to seek the Lord as to what He wants you to do, how He wants you to serve Him, what He wants you to do in the community, what He wants you to do in the church. Just, just, uh, Because you see, church, if I tell you what to do, I might tell you something wrong. I might tell you what I think. I might tell you what I feel. And it may not have anything to do with God at all. Because it would be a carnal thing. But if you hear from God, then you will know in your heart what God has said to you. I guess on the other hand, you say, well, you know, we don't want to just uh, ignore everything that everybody says because God might be using them also. Amen? I say this to you, if he can use a donkey to speak to somebody and say, hey, don't go that way, he could use better people too in your life. And I will say also, I said I was going to put, I, I also say this, that it doesn't necessarily have to be a godly person that God uses to, to give you a word. I remember one time, uh, you know, when I sought after the Lord, I, I sought the Lord. I mean, I was seeking the Lord. And, and I went about every place I could go where I thought I might hear something <clears throat> that would affect me or that would help me grow and uh, this guy called me one day and, and uh, he said why well, he said I've been trying to get a hold of you for a long long time he said you're never home I said well I've been going to church and different things and, and he said I, I can't remember the exact words but he said something about it. he said well if you're always gone like that how can you in other words how can you be taking care of your family because you're always gone. And he wasn't, he wasn't a, uh, I don't, I'm not going to say he was an atheist, but he wasn't somebody that I considered a real spiritual person. But yet, he had the word that I needed to hear. That sometimes, you can get, see you can get too far off balance. You can get leaning too far one way. And you've got to get straightened back up. Everything in life that you do is important. And so your family is important too. Amen. So you can't lean just too far one way. I'm telling you, church, some of these things because I've made mistakes. I've done things that I shouldn't have done. Some of it was in the... How many knows that if you're on fire for God that the devil will try to use things of God to trip you up. Amen? He'll try to get you leaning one way too far or something to trip you up. So those are, I'm telling you these things because I've experienced some of it. And, and I want to uh, say to the church that I don't want you to have to go through some of that. Amen? So let's uh, go ahead and uh, close. And uh, we're going to open the altar. For anybody that might have something on your heart that you'd like to talk to the Lord about, we'll uh, open the altar, and, and uh, if, if you feel like you would like to come and, and seek the Lord this morning, that'd be fine. We'll pray with you. We'll seek the Lord with you. And uh, 
you know, ask God to help you and lead you and guide you.